Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. This is going to be a continuation of Let's Build a Game, and I've kind of renamed it a little bit, and we're going to get a clean slate here. And we're going to start off by being organized and maintaining some organization. So, what I've done is I've created a, a sample or a starter pack for this series to work from. So if you want to follow along with this, then you're going to have to download it. It is free. Grab it, download it, and I'll show you what to do with it once you do have it downloaded. So once you've got it downloaded, um, and I'm assuming that you have uh, WinZip or WinRAR or something of that nature. Um, if you don't, then get it. I don't know why you don't. But go ahead and right click on it. And yes, I need the colors because we're probably not going to use that name for anything else. But as soon as you right click on it, we're going to extract it to here. And it's going to put everything inside this one folder. From there, all we do is we can double click on the blue one. It's the Unreal Engine project. Once we double click on it, that's going to open up everything that we need. And I'll go ahead and move this back off screen again. So what that's doing is that's going ahead and opening up this particular project. And we want to open it up. Mm, beautiful, lovely. OK, the next step we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit File and Exit. Why did we just open it if we're just going to immediately close it? Well, go back to our Epic Launcher. And the first step we want to do is we see it is now showing up here. So I want to right click on it and select Clone. And I'm going to hit Browse. And I'm going to go to the default location where normally the Unreal projects are, which is going to be in Documents, My Documents, and Unreal Projects. And we're going to select that folder. And we're going to call this Tutorial Project or whatever you want to call it and then hit create and then select continue and it's going to go ahead and you know ignore the rest of my projects here um, then you, you'll find it and open it up and I'm drag that back off screen again because we don't need that anymore it'll now open up the, uh, the project we just created and cloned always want to do that first step because you want to save the original in case you screw up something you can always come back to it and start from scratch again watching these series alright so yep. thanks for joining me next step I'm going to do is click right here so that I can see the assets now the assets that I've already created are the starter content and the third person template however I've taken steps already to go ahead and move things around into a cleaner format so you have your assets folder and when you open up your assets folder you're going to have audio and you'll have the music and the sounds from the starter pack and their sound cues you have all of your materials for everything including the um, the props are inside here your meshes and these are primarily just your props your particles and your textures so all of these are already in here for your starter content your character folder I've gone ahead and migrated over all of the stuff from the third person template. So you've got your animations, your blueprints, your materials, your mesh, and your textures. So all that's already here. So we have a third person character. Uh, maps, I've created a starter map which is called Mesh Map. We're actually going to use this to create our own assets for using in our game and then another folder called modes which is your primary modes like third person game mode and we go to our world details our world settings and if you don't have your world settings then all you have to do is just click on window and so just put a check next to the world settings make sure it's all there so with that um, our game mode override is set to none the next step we want to do is go to third person game mode and then make sure that we're using our third person character alright from that we can go ahead and just click play and this is what we have now I know there's a setting in to replace or to check to where you can actually remove it from having that 
stupid mouse crusher bug that I get all the time. So I've gone ahead and added that to the actual blueprint itself. And all I've done is gone to blueprints and open level blueprints. And I've added in... The sequence is not really necessary in this map, but you want to set input mode to game only, um, get player controller, and set show mouse cursor to vaults. Okay, that being said, the next thing we want to do in our process of getting organized is go ahead and let's create a new game mode. And I'm going to right click in this folder here for modes, and I'm going to select a blueprint class and game mode base. And we're going to call this main menu underscore GM for our main menu game mode. Now whenever I go into it, it's going to show everything here. And that's fine. Game session, leave that alone. Game state, player controller, all this is, is fine. Default pawn class, we're going to set to none. We're going to compile and save and close it. And then when we go back into it again, it's going to give us this view because we don't have anything in the rest of the editor. So we're just using the, the normal defaults here and we need to go ahead and create a main menu HUD system and that will be the next step. So let's go ahead and we're not going to add it into this map so let's go ahead and create a main menu map and we can hit save all make sure everything's saved for that in our maps, let's go ahead and select File and New Level. We're going to use an empty level and we're going to select Save All, which is not going to do anything. We'll do Save Current and make sure we're in our Maps folder and we're going to call this Main Menu underscore Map. And we'll save that. Make sure everything is good. Now we're going to set up our game mode override to main menu game mode. Default class is going to be all the settings that we had saved from before. We're going to save all. Now, let's go ahead and we've got our main menu game mode, our main menu uh, folder right there. And it seems that one of the folders that I created did not get migrated over. So let's go into our content folder and create one more new folder and we're going to call this interface. And we can click in here. Actually, let's go back to our modes and let's create a blueprint class. Select all classes here and type in HUD. And we're going to click on it and select and we're going to call this main menu underscore HUD. And if we open it up, there's not going to be anything in here just yet. So just hit save and close it. We're going to add something here in just a moment. We're going to go to our interface. And we need to create user interface widget blueprint. And we're going to call this main menu underscore W. Or we can actually to keep um, being clean w underscore so we know that this is going to be a widget for our main menu and all we're wanting to do here for now is we want to go ahead and add in a very simple thing to start off with and that's just going to be a play button we'll put this here we're going to anchor it to the bottom middle and we're going to grab some text drop it on top of there and we're going to go ahead and change the name of the button to play button and then change our text to play game and with our button let's go ahead and resize it to let's try 200 by 50 our position. Let's look at um, just try to center it up. Again, if you just did zero zero, it's just going to put it below the, the map, and that's not going to do us any good. This checkered line here, or this blue line, is going to be the the viewable section. So if we actually were tr trying to get it centered, then we want to have 
um, negative 100. We'll center it up left and right for our X position. In our Y position, we want to go ahead and put that to, say, negative 70. So that'll put it right there in the bottom of our screen. And there we go. So we hit Compile and Save on that. And all this is going to do is be a link to another map that we don't have yet. So again, we can come back in here and let's create a new level and use default. And to get set up normally, I'm going to grab these things, get rid of them, go to my landscape here. I'm going to set this to one by one on number of components. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Go back to my object placement and I'm going to go ahead and set my landscape down to zero for my Z height. My world settings are going to go to third person game mode. Yes, I'm moving kind of quick. You'll be able to go back and, and redo all these things by backing up the video. So now we've got that and then we can go ahead and let's save all and let's give this a map name of level underscore zero one and we'll save that we'll go ahead and quickly do a build so we save everything and let's give you a second to go ahead and open up a nice cold beverage and today's beverage of choice is Pepsi cherry vanilla all right when that window comes up you can just go ahead and close it all right, so with this map, we're going to go ahead and do a save all one more time to make sure that's saved. And let's stay clean. Let's go ahead and right click on level 01, create a folder, map stuff. And I'm just going to grab everything that's here by clicking on the first one, holding down shift, and clicking on the last one. And I'm just going to left click and drag it in, and then close that folder and tab there, or you know, click there. That's going to put everything neat and organized into that folder. So we are done with this map for the moment. Now with our main menu widget, what we're wanting to do here is we can go to our graph and we don't need any of these things right now. Click on our play button here and on clicked. What we want to do is when we click this button, we want to open level and you want to go ahead and put in the exact name of the level that you created and if you cannot remember exactly how you typed it in click back in your maps folder click on it click on it again and again until you see it light up like that control C click off of it go to your main menu widget and paste that in there so now when we hit play and let's go ahead and put listen in here. This will come in handy if we decide to do any multiplayer functionality. It'll become a listen server. So this is all we're going to do is when we click this button for right now is we're going to go into that next level. We're going to change that later because we're going to actually add more levels in and that'll let you have a, a map selection. So when you actually click on the play button, the play button will go away and a map selection widget will pop up to where you can actually select what map you want to go to. But since we only have one, we're just going to do that. So, we now have our mesh map for making our own meshes, our main menu map, and our first level. I'm going to go back to my main menu map, and I'm going to go into my main menu HUD and open full blueprint editor get rid of these two guys and we want off the event begin play we want to create a widget and the widget that we want to create is the main menu widget owning player is going to be get player controller and we're going to need a mouse cursor so let's go ahead and drag off from the return value set show mouse cursor is going to, we're going to need that and we're also going to need to 
add to viewport. So we click that and then connect that, put a check in the box and compile and save. Now what should happen is when we are in our main menu map, it's going to use our main menu game mode. We need to select our main menu HUD, hit save all and save selected. We're going to hit play and here we are. This is our new main menu and when we click on play game it'll take us right to our map and there we go. Now just like I did on the mesh map where I added in the um, this stuff right here I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy and paste this stuff, copy it in, and then I'm going to go back to level 01, go to my blueprints, open level blueprints, delete these guys, control V, and just put it somewhere neat. Compile and save, and we can now close that one. Um, actually, while we're in it, let's go ahead and this be cool and add in our play sound at location and the sound that we want to use is our starter background cue and that'll be fine it's long it's a looping sound so it should be good to go so now if I save compile and save and now whenever I go into this map we have some sound in the background so it's not quite as boring so now am I moving too fast for everybody we want to add a little bit of coolness to our main menu map now I know we created it as none that gets us our nice black blank image however we could actually add some more functionality here and let's go to our character folder and let's go to our blueprints and I'm actually going to make a duplicate of the third person character and I'm going to call this render underscore tune and again let's go ahead and put BP underscore so it's BP underscore render underscore tune we're going to go into it and oh this is all lovely here eh, go away <clears throat> we don't need you Next thing we want to do is we want to click on the follow camera and hit delete. Um, camera boom, delete. Compile, save. We don't have anything there at all. Let's go to our viewport. Now we're going to add our own camera. And we're, we're fine with that name. And from the camera, let's add a component. And we, well, you hit the number two and you'll see scene capture component 2d and that's good um, you can call it whatever you want but I do recommend that you um, you can move your camera around and let's move it 180 degrees and let's move it back a little bit no your butthole move back and that should be good we may have to adjust it here and there so we'll click back on our scene capture component 2D and we want to scroll down here and you have scene capture texture target grab this box here open it up select render target and then we want to go to our assets folder and our textures folder actually yeah let's go to that and we're going to call this our um, RT underscore render underscore tune and save that. Okay, we're going to hit compile and save and let's drag this over here so we can see what we're doing and we'll go to our materials oh, nope, wrong folder, dum dum go to our textures here we now have our render tune and we see our character. Let's go ahead and change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. Yes, you see nothing now, but that's fine. Just come back over here, hit compile and save, 
and now you can see our character or the outline of our character so let's go ahead and move our our camera which has our scene uh, capture component in it so we hit compile and save and just moved it over a little bit we want to move them a little bit farther to the right hand side so I'm just gonna move it a little bit more compile and save and that's good enough for now he'll be on our right hand side of our screen so we'll hit save and then now let's go ahead and while we're doing let's move this down we'll move this down this down not that it matters we're going to delete our our player start because we don't need a player start because we're going to convert this into our new main menu map um, really quickly just so you have something to look at I'm going to go ahead and select my details panel and my landscape and I'm going to scroll down to landscape materials this is not the right way to do it this is just a temporary method and let's go ahead and try the moss you apply that and okay we got something here to look at on the ground and that's lovely um, let's go ahead and select in our materials our new brick go to our geometry and let's go ahead and drop a box in and come back to our details zero zero and I'm gonna say 500 and then in our XYZ for our brush settings don't use this evil little button right here if you're editing on a geometry all right well, yeah you can come back and watch it later it'll be saved automatically um, let's go for our Y setting of 1500 our I'm sorry our X sorry X value should be 100 by 1500 on our Y and 1000 on our Z and that'll give us a nice little wall and we can actually come back to our blueprints for our character grab our render tune and let's pop homeboy right here and turn him around 180 degrees so now we see he's right there standing in front of a brick wall and we can adjust his location if we want to put him a little, little closer to the wall entirely up to you so now we have a little bit of illumination he's standing there next to the wall it'll give us something to look at this is where you really want to make your main menu look really cool is you want to go ahead and make this scene as awesome as possible so that looks good to me and then what we're gonna do is come over here to file save current as and we're gonna say it's the main menu map we're gonna overwrite that one and replace our main menu map with this now so let's quickly go back in here and take a look at our we're in our main menu map if we were to hit play we have a character we need to get rid of this this character our world settings we need to change back over to our main menu game mode save all and now if we hit play we don't see our, our guy here so we need to make sure that we're gonna see this in our widget so if we come to our interface folder come to our main menu widget let's go ahead and add in an image and let's go ahead and anchor this to full screen offset zero 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 so it's all full screen and on our brush we want to select our Ren oh no wait we got one more step we got to do sorry come back to our textures for our assets our render tune right click on that and create material and the name is fine but I'm gonna go ahead and move the material to the materials folder because it's a material and now if we look at our render target material where'd you go you're hiding from me 
right there. We're going to open it up, and it looks lovely now, but it's going to break here in just a second, so we're going to have to come back into it. So I'm going to leave it open. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and close it for now. And now whenever I click on my main image, which we'll call our background, and we want to set the Z order to negative 1. So we can still see our button. And then our image, we want to then put in our render tune material. You're going to get this red arrow looking thing here, and that's fine, just to be expected. Go ahead and click on it to change the material domain. Hit compile and save. And now it just broke our material. So let's double click on our material and reconnect the link. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So now I hit save on that. And from there, we can go back to our main menu widget and look what we got. So if we go to our main menu and play now, we have our guy standing there in the map, and he's animated. He's actually moving around a little bit, and I think that's pretty cool. It's it's a good way to add a little bit of life to your menu. You could have moving NPCs. You could have other things going on. We have the sound playing in the background. It's not as boring as it would be as a plain black menu. So, cool, right? So if we hit play game, it's automatically just going to go ahead and load up our next map, which is level 1. It takes a little bit longer inside here to actually do it, but there we go. It loads up. We can hit escape. And that's our, our main menu for now. Okay. Since I'm moving really, really quickly and covering a lot of ground quickly, um, I want to keep these streams to no longer than an hour because I don't want everybody to get totally bored. Um, let's go ahead and add some more functionality to that main menu because, well... We can go ahead and close that, and close that, and close that. If we look at our main menu, it is kind of plain, so we want to add some functionality in. So we're going to create um, four maps. Um, you're going to eventually want to have four maps or more or, or whatever, but let's go ahead and set up to where you actually are ready to go with those four maps and add some basic functionality. So once we hit play game, we want this play game button to go away and we want a new window to pop up for us to select our map. Um, yeah, YouTube is being weird. I try to keep everything refreshed so I can see what's going on on the screen here. So, okay. When we hit this uh, the play button, instead of it taking us directly to the um, the level, we want to have um, a thing create levels for us, so or have a a selection for our maps. So I'm going to go to level zero one, and I'm going to go ahead and file and save current as, and let's go ahead and call this level underscore zero two and save and let's go ahead and do it two more times save current as we'll do level three and one more time let's do um, save current as and let's call it level four all right so we have four new levels or four levels total right here and let's go to one so now we're on level one and just so we know where we are let's go ahead and quickly put in we don't need anything special I'm just gonna grab a geometry throw it in the map and no material it's gonna go zero 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 make sure let's go 100 let's grab our player start and move him back so he stands right there in front and let's go ahead and add in a text render and it's completely backwards so we'll just do 180 we're gonna do our text to level 01 
and it's going to be really small, which doesn't matter. We can do 0, 0. In fact, we want to do negative 100 and 100, 100, and actually just slide it over a little bit. And we're going to come down here to our world size, and let's try 50. That looks great and we will save all and then again let's go ahead and save actually let's while we're on our text render let's change our text over to we should have done this first level 2 and then we will file save current as level 2 and overwrite. Click back on our text render and we're just going to do this for level 3 and quickly save current as 3 overwrite. Back on our text render level 4 and finally save current as and overwrite. Okay, so we now have four different levels and if we hit play goody grab our text render and let's set it to why did you change it to 90? Because that's where we wanted it. Um, we need to bring it out just a hair. So we'll do negative 101, and it should put it right there on the outside. So we hit play. We can see that's level 4. Uh, growing pains. So we'll come to this, our text render, negative 101. Lovely, it works. Save all. Two, text render negative 101 tab save all and we'll go back to level 1 text render and negative 101 okay so now we can get back to what we're doing here and let's go back to our main menu map and let's go back to our main menu widget okay so now whenever we actually click on our play game button we want to instead of loading the level open level we're going to actually create the next section here so let's go ahead and create a panel we're going to go with a horizontal box and we're just going to drag it into the map doesn't matter the size just yet and position and all but we will go ahead and anchor that to the bottom middle and then inside this horizontal box we want to try to be somewhat nice and put a uniform grid panel in now the uniform grid panel is going to allow us to add some things to it and set it up as a nice grid and I'm going to go ahead and add a button to it and text to the button now we see that there's that that's the button right here so we'll come back and edit the buttons here in just a minute but we need to go ahead and add some stuff to it and actually I don't want to do uniform grid panel let's actually dump that um, a horizontal box. Uh, what was the one I was looking for? Grid panel. Let's add the grid panel to the horizontal box. And now we can click in here and add in our button and our text to our button. And then we want to control C and then on the, the button and then control V. And there we go. We got 
this horizontal box. We need to also make sure that it is a variable. So select that right there. We're going to call this our map selection box. So we know what it is. We have all these buttons here and we don't have anything but they're stacked on top of each other. So um, we want to set up a way for seeing what they are. And the buttons are fine. We need to go back to our grid panel and in our column fill and a row fill. We just want to make a four-way or we want to make horizontal. Um, if you add one to this right here, now you have that. So if we click on button two and click down, we now have a vertical line, but we don't want a vertical line. So we go back to our um, our styling, or actually our, our grid panel, and to our column fill. Let's actually delete that, and we want to add rows. So now if we have that in here, we can grab this and drag it down. But again, you know, let's do it that way. And then grab this last one and add it in. So now let's grab our make selection box. Let's make it a little bit bigger so we can fit everything in here. And that's going to put them in here. So we want to continue to make this um, a little bit nicer. And I guess what we can do here is take a look at it and try to organize. You can screw around with these controls all you want to. There's a lot of different um, ways you can set up these panels. You can just lay the buttons out and let them be done with it. But I want to go ahead and let's add one in here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just having a little bit of a, a cranial flatulence here. And we're going to select on, on the zero here and we're going to put a one and then we're going to hit tab twice. One, tab, tab, one, tab, tab, one. So go back to that. So now we have it set up to where they're all going to be equal spaced and we can go ahead and get our map selection box and close this up a little bit if we want to. Um, our grid panel we've got set to right there and that's fine the way it is right here we can make adjustments as we need to and if you want to do that what I'm going to do is actually leave it like this so I can drag it down to the bottom of the screen so it's right there when I, you first hit it this will come up and let's try to center that the size let's make it a uniform size of 600 Actually, 650 by 250 so that we can anchor it to negative 325 by a negative 260, and that should line it up pretty good. So, what we want to do now is when we actually click on our play button, we want to Um, we need one more button. Well, we've got our, our maps. You click on your map, it's going to then load the map. We can go directly in it from there, so that'll be good enough for now. Again, functionality is, is really important for, for a lot of things, but let's go ahead and set visibility and we're going to use this on the play button. We want to get play button, drag this off to here. And so when we hit the button, 
we're going to actually change that to hidden. So another thing we want to do really quickly is our map selection box. We're going to come over here to visibility and set it to hidden. We're going to compile and save. So now when we actually are looking at it, we can click on this little eye right here and make it invisible to here. So what will happen is we see this, we hit our play button, it's going to make this visible and the play button invisible. So now we're going to set the visibility of the play button to off and then we want to do the map selection box. We want to get that and we want to control C and control V and grab this, connect it to here and set this to visible. Hit compile and save and just a quick test we hit our button there we go. Now we haven't added a functionality of these buttons here just yet um, well, we, and we don't have a back button so you know, not a big deal. We're not really worried about that just yet. So what we want to do now is we want to make these buttons functional. So let's go ahead and call this um, map one button. We'll call this one map two button. And the main reason why you want to do this is because it makes it easier to see whenever you come back later and you're trying to work on something. Map three button. We can look right here and know, okay, this is map one button, map two button, map three button. Instead of what is button 342 or whatever, it, it just makes sense. Map but map uh, th four button. Okay, so now we have names to them. Let's go to our text block, and it doesn't really matter what it says there. We just want to change the text inside of it. Level 01. Text block here. Level 02. And see, it's changing our grid here, which I'm not a fan of, but oh well, we'll make do with it. Level 03. And then our final one is level 04. So now, since it decided to resize those, let's go back over to our grid panel. And I want it auto fill, but that's okay. Um, map selection box, size to content, and we can do that. Um, Nah. So our new size, let's go with 530. Now, we'll go with 540. Let's just go ahead and eyeball it for now. I don't like to eyeball things, I like to be more precise. But, any essence of time, let's just do it that way. So now we've got all of our buttons here. So we click on map button one. Let's even take this another step farther. Let's create a new variable and we'll we'll change the functionality of this later here. We're gonna call this map name to use. And we're actually gonna change the variable type to name. We want to actually no. Let's, let's not get too complicated just yet. Let's keep it simple. Um, select map one button, on clicked map two, on clicked map three, on clicked. We're just going to get them out here. So I'm going to adjust them as I need to, but I want to see them. get them in a spot where I can work with them here. All right, I want you to be here. Whenever I click on map button one, I want to open level. And we want to level 
underscore zero one. And that was the name of our map, correct? And let's go ahead and grab this. And the only thing we changed was the, the number at the end, so we can just control C on that just to make sure that we're we're correct. And now let's go ahead and stage this up and we want to open level and let's go ahead and again let's try to keep it nice and clean control V change to a 2 and here and here can actually control C, control V, control V, and position these. Now we can change this number here at the end to three and this one to four. All right, so nice and simple. Let's compile and save and let's actually go ahead and hit play and we see our character hanging out hit the play button and let's hit level one and there we go we're at level one so now the next thing we want to do and we want to get back to the main menu so the only way we're going to be able to do that is actually set up some sort of mm, widget we're going to need widgets let's go to our interface we're going to right click user interface widget blueprint w underscore escape underscore menu let's go ahead and open that up and let's drag its buttocks over here we're going to close the main menu widget because we don't need it just yet go to edit project settings we want to go to input action mapping hit the plus we're going to call this escape menu and then we're going to tell it to use the I don't know the escape key how about that go to keyboard and escape okay that's it and close that we're gonna go ahead and hit save all we're gonna to go to our um, escape menu and let's go ahead and add something in there so we can have something to look at and this is going to be even more simple we're just going to grab a vertical box um, here we're going to anchor it to the center I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger that looks lovely we're going to come up here we're going to add a button with some text and then we're going to add in a primitive we're going to add in a spacer on top of our vertical box and then we're going to control C and control V and control C on the button and then control V on the vertical box so that now we can have a copy of our button and let's go ahead and give this a 20 by two, no dum dum 20 by 20 your Y is going to be your vertical. Um, why? Why? I don't know, but okay. And let's go ahead and name our buttons. You can actually just hit F2, and we're going to call this main menu button. And then the other one, we're just going to name it resume button. And then our text for that, we're going to go ahead and say main menu. And then here, we want to go ahead and change the text for the resume button. Resume. Simple enough, right? So let's grab this. We're going to choke it down a little bit. We're going to go ahead and head to our event graph. You guys can go away. I'm going to click on our main menu button, unclicked, resume button, unclicked. So now we're just going to set up some functionality. If we want to resume, this is the easy one. 
Um, all we have to do is remove from parent and it'll go away. But let's go ahead and make sure we have some other functionality to go along with it. Let's drag this out just a hair to ensure that we get rid of our mouse cursor. We want to set input mode to game only because we don't want that pesky mouse cursor screwing up things. Um, get player controller and we want to keep everything neat. Set show mouse cursor to false. We're going to drag you up here and then we're going to remove from parent. So what it's going to do is it's going to go back to a regular game mode and it's going to get rid of our mouse cursor and it's going to get rid of that widget. Cool. So compile and save on that. Now when we hit our main menu button we want to go back to our main menu. So let's go ahead and just do open level and the level that we want is our main menu map. So we go back to our maps. Let's make sure we get it correctly. Control C and let's paste that in here. So now when we hit that it's going to go boom right back to our main menu. So simple enough. Not much to it but we just need to finish the functionality and let's go to our character blueprints Let's go to our third person character and I don't know about you guys but I'm not using touch input. I limit the amount of touching myself. I mean the touch uh, stuff. Yeah, well, never mind. I'm going to leave that out alone. Uh, I'm not using a gamepad so I'm going to get rid of that. I, I, I just, I'm old and I don't use them. And I'm not using VR so I don't need that as well. And this guy, yeah, you can come right over here. That's lovely. So now we're all good. We're back to clean again. And let's go ahead and make our function for escape menu under action events. So when we actually hit the escape key, we're going to create a widget. And here's where we need to get player controller. So we want it to be in our view. We want to add to viewport. We want a mouse cursor. So let's go ahead and set show mouse cursor. And true. So what are we forgetting here? Let's um, try to neaten things up a little bit. We're going to create our widget. We need to tell it what widget to use widget escape menu. We want to add it to viewport and we want to show our mouse cursor. Let's set our game mode. Um, so let's um, set input to UI only and we want to get a reference from our player controller we want to grab a reference from our widget to here and there we go. That should give us what we need here. So let's actually test that out. The only way we're going to be able to test this out correctly is we hit play now and we hit play game. Let's go to level three. If we hit escape it just does that. So let's go to the arrow next to play. Let's come to standalone game and run that. Um, there is a multiplayer series part of this tutorial, but the only way that I make any money now is I sit here. I, I, I can't work right now, so um, I sell a template that is uh, a multiplayer template, which gives you some multiplayer Steam functionality, and I sell it through PayPal for 10 bucks, and it's a working multiplayer system. So what I'm trying to do is get it this configured a little bit here and there so that um, you can actually convert it into multiplayer. The same setup for the files is, is, is going to work. 
So all right, let's go ahead and hit play game. Let's go to level three. Yay, we're at level three. We can do all kinds of fun things. Okay, now we're done. Let's hit escape. Oh, I didn't really mean to hit escape, so let's hit resume. Oh, okay, we're back to play again. And let's go back to the main menu. And there we go. Um, the only thing we don't have is an exit game button. We don't have a way of killing it. So, how do we get out of here? Oh no, my mouse is stuck in the box. Um, you can, um, well, just Alt-Tab. And click down here and hit that X. So, we got to have a, um, a way to get out of the game. So, let's go back to our interface, our main menu widget. And let's go ahead and just pull out a little button down here for exit game. Yep, that sounds good. So let's go ahead and grab a button. We're just going to chuck it right there, anchor it to the bottom right, and we're going to go ahead and add some text onto our button. We're going to call it our exit button. And then we want to set the text in here to exit. Simple enough. And go to our graph our exit button on clicked and we're going to drag you up here because you look pretty and quit game it's complicated I know but there you go quit game um, hit compile and save and now let's go back in here and play it in our standalone but yeah you know, I figured $10 for a multiplayer template that get you active multiplayer where you can actually have friends join you then I think that's pretty cool so we can get a play game and the exit button is going to stay on its own so let's go ahead and hit exit there we go so that's our basic functionality and just kind of a recap of what we've done so we can close out this video because we're about to hit the one hour mark is we have you know, I've given you the download link so you can download this base project to start off with. Showing you how to actually open it up, how to clone it so you're actually working on a new version of it. And we give it our, our own specific name to our cloned version so we're not screwing up our original version. We always have a clone version to work with. We added in one folder that somehow got lost in, in packaging. It was the interface we created a main menu with functional look to it and an escape menu to get back to the main menu from our map we've created four basic maps that we'll expand upon later we have our main menu map and we have our mesh map which is where we're going to make our physical objects we're going to place in our maps that aren't included with the rest of the stuff um, again to recap on the content that is in this package is going to be your assets folder which has your audio inside there you're going to have music and sound from the actual unreal starter pack materials from the starter pack meshes and props from the starter pack the particles from the starter pack and all the textures and again um, there's a geometry folder that somehow managed to infiltrate its way in here um, not a big deal but in the essence of being clean if you wanted to you can go ahead and take these two static meshes and this one and put them into your assets and your meshes and all that kind of stuff but it's, it's fine the way it is we have a characters folder which has our animations from our third person template our blueprints which came with our third person character we added a render tune we had our original materials for the actual character the mesh for the original character and textures and we did create our render tune which is this guy here in the scene it's in our main menu we have our interface folder that I had to make separately because I forgot or it just didn't get in the packaging and there we go with our two main widgets our maps folder and our modes folder we got our main menu game mode uh, main menu HUD third-person game mode and 
everything seems to be clean, neat, and organized. We have a folder called Map Stuff, which contains all of our main stuff, and we can clean these up later if we need to, and we will. So let's go ahead and hit Play in Standalone Game show you how it looks one more good time and that'll be it now questions and answers please refer to my discord channel and the question and answers section I will probably create a separate section dedicated just for um, questions about the tutorial but for now just use the questions and answers section not the public lobby and I will answer them as I see them we hit play game we get a, a map selection. Let's go ahead and select a, a level. Alright, we got our character. Everything's functional. We can see we're on level 4. And we have our escape menu where we can resume and continue playing. Or we can actually go back to our main menu. And there we go. And we're ready to go. We can click exit and close the game. Alrighty guys, I thank you for watching, and if you guys want to see another episode of this today, later today, then let me know, and I will do another hour, but I don't want to do more than one hour at a time, because I don't want people getting stretched out. So, get with me on my Discord channel, let me know if you want to see another hour today, and if so, I will do another hour today, but let's go ahead and do a save all, save current, and we are good to go, file, and exit. Alright, thanks for watching and let me know and I will go ahead and get another video out today, otherwise the next video will be on Thursdays. And if I have enough popularity in this series, then I will go ahead and do at least five days a week, Monday through Friday, do an hour every day. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the Discord.